someone here doesn't like me because it's never good to follow Chairman and Royce. His passion uh, for this is overwhelming, and I'm very proud uh, that he is our, our Chairman of the Foreign Affairs uh, Committee. Uh, your Eminence, is, it's great to see you, Ambassador and Representative. Thank you um, for the opportunity. All of you, it, it is it's a privilege and an honor. Uh, it, I, it's always, I believe it's always been uh, a special honor to represent a district in New York City. Um, maybe because New York, to some extent, is the perfect embodiment of the quintessential aspect of American exceptionalism as a land where the most oppressed have found the blessings of freedom. Thousands of my constituents and visitors cast the Statue of Liberty on the Staten Island Ferry every single day. And emblazoned on that statue is the now famous line, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Send these, the homeless, and the tempest tossed to me. You know, that may seem cliche to, to some, but it isn't to me. It's, it certainly isn't to my constituents. And it's certainly not to the Armenian American community and all the hardworking men and women who advocate on their behalf. You know, we pride ourselves on being the home of the tough skin, the survivors, the battle-hardened scrapers, the refugees whose story in this country began as an ember of desperate hope and has grown into a blazing legacy of prosperity and pride. If there's any group that has earned the right to wear that badge of courage, those stripes of distinction, is without question the Armenian people. In 1915, an oppressive imperial regime, blinded by hatred, sought to wipe an entire people from the face of the earth. And through the horrifying instruments of torture, rape, death camps, murders, forced marches, put over a million and a half million innocent men, women, and children to their death in furtherance of this horrific goal. And in spite of these efforts, the Armenian diaspora is one of the most successful well-educated, respected, and influential ethnic communities in the entire world. Being well represented by a bustling presence in almost every major nation and nearly every industry and field under the sun. So why do we gather here today? To harken back such painful memories of loss and anguish? It's often said that the only thing for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. An equally wise saying is that those who do not remember the past are doomed to repeat it. Therefore, the only way that we may truly honor the hundreds of thousands of victims of the Armenian Genocide and to build <clears throat> a world that rejects hatred is to remember and commemorate the sacrifices of these innocents. When our country was attacked on 9-11, the phrase never forget, was embedded in our nation's conscience. Because justice demands that we remember the dead. These victims and their descendants stake moral claims on this society and the members of Congress to ensure that through our remembrance, we never permit or tolerate such atrocities ever again. I hope all of my colleagues and those present today will join me in commemorating those lost in the Armenian Genocide and thank their descendants and successors for honoring the sacrifice of their forebears through the many labors and ambitions that helped this great nation to become what it is today. Thank you and God bless you.